So welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far. So today's video is finally going to be my high-end concealer comparison video. I have been testing out and trying five different high-end concealers and I feel like I really have a good idea of which ones I think will work best for which skin type. So I cannot wait to share this video with you guys. I'm going to compare all of them to each other and then I'm going to do separate reviews on each one so that way you can get a good idea at which one would work well for you. If you're only interested in certain concealers, I'll put timestamps in the description box below so you can jump ahead but before I jump into like the individual reviews I'm going to do a comparison so you know which one is like the best bang for your buck which one is the most full coverage and things like that sorry this video took so long I have been testing these out and I wanted to make sure I gave every single one of them a fair shot before I film this video I do want to film a part two if you guys like this video so please let me know in the comments below which concealers I should include in the next one so I can start working on testing them out okay so here's a look at the five concealers that I'm comparing today I have the Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer, the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer, the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer, the Too Faced Born This Way Naturally Radiant Concealer, and the Kat Von D Locket Concealer Creme. <laughs> I'm probably just gonna say cream because I feel weird every single time I say creme. Anyways, I'm going to compare these or I'm going to do a breakdown on each product in like a separate review where I'll include comparisons to the other ones, but I'm going to share product information, pros and cons of each product, and also tips and tricks that I have when applying that specific concealer. And then I'll share like a final recommendation on who I think would really enjoy it. Before I do that, I just wanted to rank them in three different categories. So I'm going to rank them in price, in coverage, and then also in comfort. Comfort is kind of like personal opinion but I thought I would share that with you guys anyways okay so let's start with cost because I feel like that is a major factor for me when I'm buying a product so some of these concealers come with less some come with more but I had to kind of create like an even playing field so I did the math and I broke it down to how much it would cost for a quarter of an ounce so just keep in mind these aren't the prices that the concealers actually cost but if you were to purchase a quarter of an ounce of this concealer that's how much the value would be I hope that makes sense so the most expensive in terms of value or cost is the urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer. This one will cost $43.75 for a quarter of an ounce, which is very expensive. When I saw this, I realized it came with less product, but not that much less product for the price. The second most expensive is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This one is $34.09 for a quarter of an ounce. The third most expensive is Too Faced, and this one is $30.43. Kat Von D is pretty similar. This one is $29.55, and then Tarte is is definitely the best value. This one is $18.38 for a quarter of an ounce. So the Urban Decay Naked Skin is almost 2.3 times more expensive than the least expensive one, which is Tarte Shape Tape. So that is just a quick comparison on the cost. When I go through each of these individually, I'll tell you how much they retail for. So moving on to coverage, I'm going to rank them in terms of the most full coverage to the least full coverage, in my opinion. So the most full coverage is definitely the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer. You can sheer it out, which I'll talk about in a minute, but in general, I believe that it is the most full coverage. In second place, I have the Kat Von D Locket Concealer Creme. I would say they are very similar in terms of coverage, but I just find the Tarte to be a little bit more full coverage. That being said, they are definitely both very full coverage concealers. Next is the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. This one is a medium to buildable coverage concealer. You can definitely get full coverage out of it, but you can also get like a nice medium application. The two with the least coverage are very similar. Too Faced Born This Way probably has slightly more coverage than Urban Decay's naked skin concealer and I feel like you can build this one up a little bit more but it's still on the lighter to medium side and then the Urban Decay naked skin concealer is probably the lightest coverage out of all of them I would say I don't think that's to say it's a very super super lightweight coverage concealer but it's the least full coverage out of the ones that I've mentioned in my opinion so in terms of comfort I would have to say Urban Decay's naked skin is the most comfortable and I would say the Too Faced Born This Play is probably the second most comfortable concealer this one is very very hydrating you really can't feel it once it's on the skin next is the NARS radiant creamy concealer I love this one I think it is really comfortable under the eyes and it doesn't bother me at all so Tarte shape tape is the fourth most comfortable in my opinion it is very heavy again you can sheer it out which I'll get into but I would say the Kat Von D locket concealer creme is just very heavy under the eyes I mean I have to say that because I'm ranking them but I don't find any of them extremely uncomfortable under the eyes if that makes sense so I just wanted to give you guys 
a little bit of a ranking as to which ones I think are the most comfortable. Okay, I hope that part was helpful and not too confusing, but since I was doing a comparison, I did wanna give you like a quick breakdown. So now I'm going to move into separate reviews, but I'm going to split it into two parts. So the two that I think are most similar are the Tarte Shape Tape and the Kat Von D Locket. So I'm going to review those two first, and then I will come back and review the other three toward like the middle or the end of this video. So again, you can skip ahead if you want. I'll put timestamps in the description. Okay, let's start with the Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer because this one has a lot of hype surrounding it on YouTube right now. So this one is $25 for 0.34 ounces. I have some notes over to the right of me because I wrote down a lot of info and I don't want to get anything wrong. This one comes with 14 different shades. I have the shade Fair, which is the lightest, and I feel like it's a little bit light for me. I could definitely go a shade or two darker, but I feel like it is very brightening. The shade range is a little bit tricky in my opinion. I wouldn't recommend ordering online unless you really are sure of which color you're going to wear, but I feel like the shade range is kind of tricky. Like it jumps around, there are different undertones, so it's kind of hard to choose which one will work well for you. Okay, so let's start with packaging. The tube is a little bit shorter and a little bit fatter than some of the other concealers. The large doe foot applicator is definitely my favorite part. I feel like it makes doing your makeup so quick and easy, and if you like to use it for highlighting or contouring, it's definitely going to be easy to apply to your face. I do feel like this packaging has a tendency to get a little bit messier than some of the other packages just because the doe foot applicator and the opening is so large, so you just have to be a little bit careful when you're going in and out of the tube. The product itself does have a very slight perfume scent. I don't think it's anything too overwhelming or overpowering, and once you blend it in, I personally do not notice it. It has a very beautiful radiant finish. I do feel like it can feel a little bit sticky if you don't set it with a setting powder and I always set my concealer with a setting powder because I struggle with under eye creasing. It is a very creamy concealer but like I said it does have a very slight tackiness to it and it is a very thick concealer so you really have to work to blend it out. So let's start with the pros. It is the most full coverage concealer that I have personally tried so it's great for covering up redness, dark circles, and under eye wrinkles. I find that it actually does blur my under eye wrinkles. I struggle with very obvious under eye wrinkles or under eye creasing so that is usually what I look for. I don't want my product to crease and I would love for it to kind of blur those wrinkles as much as possible. You do get the most amount of product for the value like I talked about at the beginning and you only need the smallest amount if you're looking to just cover up those dark circles or those under eye wrinkles. You can use as much as you want especially if you are into highlighting and brightening up the face but you really just need a very few like a couple of dots and it will cover your complete under eye area. I think it works for all skin types. I find it hydrating but I also feel like it stays in place on my oily skin. Like I I said I always set everything with a powder but I don't have any trouble with it kind of moving around or settling into fine lines which is great. It is a very brightening concealer. Now obviously I think it's going to depend a little bit on what shade you choose but I feel like it has that natural radiance to it and it is supposed to be able to be used as a contouring product as well. Obviously you can use any of these concealers as contours but I do feel like the packaging in the product itself is going to be ideal for cream contouring because it's going to stay in place and you're going to be able to apply it very easily. For those reasons you can also use it to cover blemishes, dark spots on your face, whatever you like. So let's move on to cons. The first con is that it is very thick so I feel like you do have to work to blend it out. I do not recommend using a brush with this which I guess that's part of my tips and tricks but I always use a damp beauty blender. I personally love using a brush to blend out my concealers but I feel like you have to use a damp beauty blender with this one because it is so thick it really does take a little bit of work to blend it out and the extra moisture that the damp beauty blender provides will really help to make sure you get a nice even appearance. If you want something that is extremely full coverage and will stay in place all day long, this is the one for you. If you want something that's a little bit more lightweight and natural coverage, this is definitely not the one for you. This one retails for $26 and you get 0.22 ounces, which is pretty good. So this one has 21 shades, which is awesome. So I feel like this has the best shade range. I should have done that comparison in the beginning. So if you're struggling with finding a concealer that's going to match you, check out Cap on D. They actually have different shades for different undertones. So I do give them props for having the best amount of shades. The packaging on this one is really fun. They have like a painted drop on it, which I think is cool. Kat Von D has like some of the best packaging, but the bottle itself is just like a regular bottle. You open it up and I actually prefer this applicator to a lot of the other ones. It is a doe foot applicator, but it's a little bit more triangular shape, so you can really get in underneath your under eye and you just get a really precise application. It's not flimsy, it's not hard to work with, it's just a really good solid applicator. This one does have a slight scent, but honestly it's nothing too noticeable compared to the other ones. I feel like I don't even notice it once it's on my face. I have to really like search for it to smell it. And it is a 
creamy satin finish. If you struggle with dryness, this is going to be ideal for you. So I guess moving into the pros. It's very hydrating. It is very full coverage, so it's great for dark circles, for redness. I would not recommend it for under eye wrinkles, which we'll get into in the cons because that's personally a con for me. But because it is so full coverage, it's great for covering up those dark circles. I find that it actually blends out a little bit easier than the Tarte Shape Tape. So if that is one of the reasons why you don't like this one, the Cap on D might be a good option for you. It blends out really nicely with a brush or with a beauty blender and it still remains full coverage with a really beautiful satin radiant finish. Again, it is a little bit more lightweight than the Shape Tape, but it still provides that full coverage look. Now moving on to the cons, the reason why this one is not my favorite is because like I said, I have under eye wrinkles and this one settles into my under eyes like crazy even if I set it. So it's unfortunate because I do love the formula. I think it is beautiful. It just looks gorgeous on the skin, but it settles almost instantly for me. If under eye wrinkles or under eye creasing is not a concern for you and that doesn't bother you, then I think you are going to love this. Between the two, I personally like the Tarte Shape Tape a little bit better just because it does not crease on me and I find it so full coverage so you can use it under the eyes or on the face. But if you have dry skin and you're looking for something that's a little bit more comfortable and moisturizing with the same coverage, I would recommend the Ta Kat Von D Lock It Concealer Creme. I'm sorry, I'm stumbling over my words here. The only difference is that this one does settle into fine lines, which is a deal breaker when it comes to an under eye concealer for myself, but it definitely has a lot of pros. Okay, so moving on to the other three, I feel like the other three are more similar to each other than these two. These two are so full coverage. I guess the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer kind of falls in the middle, so I'll talk about that one next, and then I will compare the other two at the very end of this video. Okay, so the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer retails for $30 and you get 0.22 ounces. They have 16 different shades available, and I wear the shade Vanilla, which is the second to lightest shade in the shade range. But this one is probably a medium to buildable coverage in my opinion. I like this one because you can build it up or you can sheer it out. So if you're looking for a really versatile concealer, this might be a good option for you. I think that this one is very comfortable under the eyes. The packaging is pretty simple. It's like a typical bottle. It is shaped like a square, which is a little bit different. And it has that soft matte cap, which feels really comfortable when you're applying it and won't slip all over the place when you're trying to open it. So this one does have a slight perfume scent, but again, it's nothing super noticeable, especially once you apply it and blend it out. It is a creamy concealer, but it's not thick like the Kat Von D concealer. It kind of has a similar texture and consistency, but it's not quite quite as sticky, but it still feels hydrating like the Kat Von D concealer. So moving on to the pros, like I said, it is a medium to buildable concealer. So you can build it up for more of a full coverage look, or you can sheer it out for something a little bit more light coverage, which is great. I feel like you can use it for so many different things. You can use it to cover redness, dark circles, acne scarring, anything on your face, because it is just a little bit more comfortable on the skin and it can be built up or sheared out. I think it does work well for all skin types. It's not overly hydrating, so it can work for oily skin because it's not going to move and budge throughout the day or break down, but it's not extremely hydrating. Like it feels comfortable for dry skin, but it's not going to hydrate or moisturize your skin like the Kat Von D concealer would. I do not find that this one settles into my fine lines when I set it with a powder, which is ideal for me because I really struggle with that. So that definitely gets a plus for me. And I feel like it does cover dark circles and redness really well without being too heavy or cakey. It's not sticky or tacky at all, which is really nice. So you don't necessarily have to set this one with a powder if you don't want to. I personally always set my concealers with powders because I do struggle with oily skin, but I feel like this one could be left alone because the finish is not uncomfortable on the skin. They say that it has skin correcting properties to it. I do like how my skin looks when I wear it and I've worn it for an extended period of time like you know I've worn it every day for a while and I feel like my skin does look good but I don't really notice that it makes a whole lot of improvements in my under eye area so as for cons like I said it's not super full coverage so you might have to use a little bit more product if you want to build it up to a full coverage look it's definitely not like the Kat Von D or the Tarte Shape Tape so you might end up using a little bit more product if you're constantly going to be building it up the other con is that some people say it oxidizes on them I haven't personally had that experience but it might oxidize on you I mean just reading different reviews online if you have very fair skin, I don't know if there's going to be a great shade that matches you because I do have the second to lightest shade and it matches me perfectly. I generally wear the lightest shade in foundations and concealers, so I feel like the lightest shade in this product might not be super light, so just keep that in mind. So I would recommend this concealer if you're looking for a reliable, comfortable concealer that's not going to let you down. If you want a medium to buildable coverage concealer that is very comfortable, this is definitely going to be the one for you. It tends to be my go-to everyday concealer no matter what I'm wearing. 
wearing just because it feels really great, it performs really well, and I think it's just a good option. Okay, so moving on to the last two. I have the Too Faced Born This Way and the Urban Decay Naked Skin. I feel like the coverage that these two provide is very similar. I don't find the formulas to be very similar. They are definitely different in my opinion, but if you're looking for more of a light to medium coverage concealer, these two might be the best option for you. I think they're great for everyday wear. They're great for the summertime when you might want to go a little bit lighter with your makeup. So let's start with the Too Faced Born This Way Naturally Radiant Concealer. This one retails for $28 and you get 0.23 ounces. They only have 10 shades, so I feel like they have one of the worst shade ranges out of all of the ones that I'm mentioning. So I don't know if you're going to be able to find a shade that works really well for you. I wear the shade Fair, which is the second to lightest shade, and that seems to match my skin pretty well. It's not extra brightening, but it does match my skin nicely. I would say that it is a light to medium coverage, probably more so medium coverage, but you can sheer it out for more of a light look. The packaging is pretty simple. It's just a plastic bottle. You pull it out and it has a doe foot applicator. Again, this one tends to get a little bit messier than some of the other ones. The stopper doesn't seem to take off as much product, so you do get quite a bit of product on the wand, which can be nice. It can be inconvenient, just depending on personal preference. It does click into place, which is kind of nice, so if it's rolling around in your purse or your bag, it's not going to get all over the place. This one does have a very strong, fresh scent in my opinion. It kind of has like a slight chemical scent, but it is very noticeable. I can even notice it once I apply it to my skin. I don't know that I notice it throughout the day, but it is really strong, so just keep that in mind. This one gives you a soft, radiant, natural finish. It is called a naturally radiant concealer, and that is definitely the finish that it gives, and it blends out very beautifully. It's very smooth and creamy, and it just feels lightweight on the skin. So moving into pros, it is a natural finish concealer. It looks really beautiful under the eyes, and it looks like your skin. It doesn't look like you're wearing another product under the eyes, which is really nice. This one is very hydrating, super moisturizing. So if you struggle with dark under, not dark under eyes, if you struggle with dry under eyes, this one is going to be ideal for you because it is so comfortable and it's very hydrating. It does have different ingredients like coconut water in it, hyaluronic acid, so it looks so beautiful on the skin. It's extremely comfortable to wear. I always reach for this one in the summertime when I don't want to have a ton of makeup on my skin and I just want my skin to feel like skin. It's funny because I don't actually like the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. It just doesn't work for me, but I do really like the Too Faced Born This Way concealer. I think this one is ideal for normal to dry skin. It can work for oily skin, of course, but I do feel like it tends to break down on me if I have a long day, I still wear it, obviously. I said that I like it for sure, but I wouldn't recommend it on like a super hot summer day or a very long day if you have oily skin because I find that it breaks down on me personally. So as for cons, I do find that it settles into my under eye wrinkles pretty noticeably. Because it is like not a sticky concealer, you can smooth it out with your finger throughout the day and it will kind of take care of that, but you do have to do it multiple times throughout the day and I don't generally like to do that with my concealers. So this one definitely settles on me. If you struggle with under eye wrinkles, it's probably not ideal. I wouldn't say that it necessarily does an amazing job at covering up dark circles or redness. It will hide those, but it's not a super full coverage concealer. I don't find it to be super long wearing. It will break down on me throughout the day. If you have dry skin or normal skin, you might not experience that, but I have very oily skin. And even once I set it with a setting powder, it doesn't necessarily last all day on me. And I would absolutely recommend setting this one with a setting powder. I just feel like it will move around. It will crease on you. It's not super long wearing. So in my opinion, it definitely needs to be set. I would recommend this to those of you that are looking for a very comfortable hydrating concealer. If you're not necessarily worried about under eye wrinkles or super dark circles or redness, this is going to be a perfect option for you if you want something that's like a good go-to everyday concealer. If you're looking to hide dark circles or redness or under eye wrinkles, it's probably not ideal, but if comfort is your main goal or like natural looking concealer, this might be a great option for you. Okay, so moving on to the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer. This one is the newest concealer to my collection. So I have the shade Fair Neutral. It comes in 11 different shades and I have the lightest shade. This one retails for $28 and you get 0.16 ounces. So it is very expensive for a concealer. It's the most expensive out of all of these. But this one is probably a light to medium coverage concealer in my opinion. They market it as a weightless complete coverage concealer. I don't find it to be complete coverage. I do find it to be very weightless. So it is a lighter weight concealer. This one, the packaging is pretty. Like it's very sleek. Again, this one kind of clicks into place and it has a paddle foot applicator that is very flexible. So you can really bend it around. You can get right up underneath your under eye and I do really enjoy it. 
The bottle is a little bit smaller, so it might be great for traveling if that matters to you. This one does have a strong, fresh scent. I'm trying to decide what to compare to. I can't, it's hard to say. If you guys have tried the Naked Skin Foundation, that's exactly what this one smells like as well. It has a very natural, almost undetectable finish. So it's very weightless, very soft and blendable. It feels so comfortable on the skin. I would say that it's even more comfortable than the Too Faced Born This Way. So if comfort is your main goal, this might be a great option for you. This one is a nice, medium to buildable coverage. I think I said lightweight coverage earlier in this video, but I would say it's probably more of a medium coverage concealer. I like to blend mine out with a brush and I actually enjoy using this when I'm wearing a full coverage foundation because it does a good job at covering my dark circles, my under eye wrinkles, but not feeling too heavy or cakey, especially when I pair it with a full coverage concealer. It actually does feel and look weightless on the skin. It is so comfortable, so lightweight. It blends out beautifully and honestly, I love the finish. I do set mine with an under eye setting powder just because I always do, but I don't find that it really creases on me, which is really nice. I think it works well for all skin types. I think that if you have dry skin, it could have the tendency to cling to dry patches just because it kind of has like that texture. Like I feel like when I do have a little bit of dryness around my nose, it kind of enhances that. But if you have normal to oily skin, I do think it's going to stay in place pretty well throughout the day. Moving on to cons, like I said, it's a little bit more of a lighter weight concealer than some of the other ones. So it might not be ideal if you have super dark under eye circles or you're using it to cover up hyperpigmentation or redness on the skin. You do get very little product for the price. It is extremely expensive compared to some of the other ones, especially the Tarte Shape Tape. It really like kind of blew my mind when I compared the price tag. And because it is lighter coverage, I feel like you'll end up using a little bit more of it. So you might go through it more quickly than you would the Tarte Shape Tape. The last con is that the scent is very strong. So if you are sensitive to scents, it might bother you. If not, just disregard that, but it is very noticeable. So I would recommend this to those of you that are looking for a lighter weight concealer, like something that feels really comfortable on the skin with medium coverage. In my opinion, it's a great everyday option. I think it works well with lighter coverage foundations or full coverage foundations because it just kind of evens out your dark circles, your under eye wrinkles, but it doesn't add any weight or cakiness to the face. My favorites are the Tarte Shape Tape Contour Concealer when I want a really full coverage look. This is the one that I go for. If I want like a good medium coverage look and I'm doing like a full face of makeup, I like the NARS Radiant Creamy Concealer. I also reach for it on days when I'm not wearing a lot of makeup, but I do want to really just brighten up or conceal any dark circles. My recent favorite has been the Urban Decay Naked Skin. I love using this one with a full coverage foundation because it doesn't feel too heavy or cakey on the skin on top of a full coverage foundation. I will also use it with a lighter weight foundation or like a CC cream if I want more of a natural look that day. So these three are my go-to. The two that I like least are definitely the Too Faced Born This Way. I just feel like this one creases really badly on me. It's really comfortable and I reach for it a lot during the summer, but I think the Urban Decay Naked Skin might take its place this summer. And then my least favorite out of all of them is the Kat Von D Locket Concealer Cream. I had high hopes for this one. I like how it applies. I like how it feels, but it creases like crazy. Like it's almost instantaneous how badly it creases. So I would not repurchase this one just because I do struggle with under eye wrinkles and it really enhances them. But that's not to say that these two won't work for you. I definitely think there are a lot of pros to all of these products. So I hope this video was helpful. You guys will have to let me know what you think in the comments below. If you enjoyed it, I can definitely start doing more comparisons, more reviews. I personally really like doing reviews. I think it's fun to test out a product and share all of my thoughts with you guys. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.